Okay, what about now? Can you hear me? What's going on? Any sound? No sound? Yes? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my God, I did it. I did it. I can't believe it. Guys, you'll never believe what I just did. I went into the settings on my computer and I troubleshooted, troubleshot my microphone and it told me it was muted. Um, so sorry about that. I don't know. I didn't change anything since yesterday. I'm so smart. I know, clearly a genius here. Um, I don't know why. I didn't change anything. It's cord I know, it's a miracle. It's a miracle, Hattie. I don't know why, because I didn't change anything yes since yesterday. I haven't even really used this computer since yesterday. And um, it said, so it has this little troubleshoot thing. And it was like, oh, we've detected that you have um, muted your microphone. <laughs> So why did that happen? I don't know. Um, so sorry about that, guys. Um, yay, you're all here. Hi, everyone. It's great to see you. It was Henry. I, You know, it actually might have been um, because the laptop was open on the, the cutting table. So um, who knows what he might have done. Your work computer did that? Like what? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so, OK, we're here, everyone. Um, sound is okay, but not on YouTube on TV. Um, okay, I don't know. It seems like it seems like everyone is hearing it. Uh, why am I so pretty? <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I was also kind of testing out the light. How's the light look to you guys? Um, I it's really dark in my living room, and I don't have like good lights, unfortunately. Someone just said, "Still no sound for me." Um, you are good. Sound is good. All right. We can hear. All right. Great. I'm just going to continue. Um, hi, everyone. How are we doing? Light is good. It's a little it's dark. Um, if you have no sound. Okay, guys, can you hear me now? Now, okay, guys, it's when I touch the light. How the light isn't even connected to the computer. I'm creeping myself out. It's, a, they're not even in the same outlet. Don't touch. All right, I'm gonna resist the urge to touch the light. Um, okay, I don't know what's going on. Um, haunted lamp, don't touch anything. <laughs> I'm not touching anything. I hope the light is okay. Call it good, all right, fine. Fine, I'm not touching anything. I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna touch the laptop. I'm not gonna touch the light. Um, <laughs> I do think I have friendly ghosts in my house. Um, I my house is like a hundred years old almost, and um, <laughs> and I'm sure there must be some ghosts living in here. But I feel like the house has like a really good vibe, so they're I they're all friendly ghosts. That's what I've decided. Um, okay, hi everyone. Welcome to Thursday. Welcome to another day of live streaming of um, Stay Home and Sew programming. Um, I am just, I'm so excited to be doing this every day. Uh, it's the cat be painting behind me. I know, there's something going on. Um, so, so excited to be doing this every day. I, you know, I'm especially excited. I mean, I know you guys say that you, you like it and you're getting something out of it, 
but um, Friday in New Zealand. But I feel like I'm getting the most out of it, to be honest. So thank you for coming to join me. Um, so, yeah, I just feel like I, you know, I worked at home alone for many years. And I, what I learned is that I don't like it. <laughs> It's not that I don't like it. Like there, there's great stuff about it. Like, you know, you can stay in your PJs until noon and you can work at all times of the day. And um, there are nice things about it, but there are like, for me, there's real downsides and that like, I just feel like my energy really slumps and I really like going into the studio. I like working with Malisha. I like having that sort of like schedule every day. And I've just, I've noticed already this first week of working at home that like I, I have just been like kind of falling back into old like ruts of like procrastinating and um, just feeling like, like put, I guess, putting things off, but also like working really slowly and feeling like sluggish. And um, I know I said I've been working on this cutting layout for, it's been like all week now. It took me like two and a half days just to get myself to open the file. And then two more days of like, just slowly moving pieces around. And I'm not, to be honest, I'm not fast about this when I am in the studio. And um, Malisha can probably, can, like Malisha, how long would a cutting layout take me if I were in the studio? Maybe two days, right? And I, like, I'm terrible about it the whole time because it's like my least favorite thing to do. And I like move really slowly and I'm like, Ugh, and I keep repeating the names of the pieces for some reason, like when I'm working on like, to, I'm right. Okay. So like Malisha laughs at me because what I, I like say the names of the pieces outside. So if I'm doing like uh, out loud, so if I'm doing the lantern sleeve on the princess coat, I'll be like lantern sleeve. And I just keep like repeating it as I'm moving it. And she's like laughing at me from across the room as I'm like yelling lantern sleeve. Um, so I have no one to say that to now and no one to like make me focus. And so finally today I had like, I was like, what is wrong with me? Um, I had to like make a list of all the different layouts I had to do, which I probably should have done to begin with, to be honest. Um, but it's, I think I, I think I'm almost done now. I'll be done tomorrow. So it's taken me like a full work week to do something that usually takes me two days in the office. So there you go. Um, I always thought I wanted to work from home, but I can't deal with it. Yeah, I know. Every, it's, it sounds so great until um, you try it. And if, it, if you're not like the type of person who can handle it, it's just, it's no good. Um, okay, so let's talk about my outfit. You guys were liking my bolero. So this is the Peter Pan bolero from Patreon. That was our um, sort of exclusive pattern on Patreon this month. And um, I was laughing today because someone asked me, we, we've only shown it closed like this with a little button here. And um, you've also probably heard me say all week that I left the scraps of fabric for the button at the studio. So I haven't made the button. I haven't put a snap on yet. But someone asked me on Instagram, they're like, what does it look like open? And I like really poo pooed it. I was like, well, I wouldn't recommend wearing it open. You know, this is it's meant to be, you know, we have this overlap here. So it's meant to be worn closed. It's meant for a button. So, you know, I don't know if you want to wear it open. You might need to like redraft it so that it like ends the edge ends at the, ed the edge of the collar. You know what I mean? So, um, but then I threw it on today. And I was like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> so um, you can wear it open. <laughs> That's today's news. Um, so this is an, I and someone else mentioned, you know, you could do like a little sweater guard or, you know, with a little chain. That would be really cute. Um, so that is breaking news. Um, looks just dandy. Um, so yeah, I did the long sleeve version on this, but it also has three quarter sleeves and I did little, um, these are, we were talking about rhinestones yesterday. So these are so on rhinestones, um, Swarovski crystals. Um, so this, and it has top stitching. What else can I show you? Um, did you guys see? I made another one this week. This is um, black boiled wool with faux fur trim, faux fur collar, and it has pom-poms on the ties. 
And it has a faux fur cuff too, which is really fun. So that's the other one I made this week. I'm also, I'm still working on the um, Ponty one, the rose print Ponty. So guys, Hattie is right here. Um, Hattie, do you want to just say hi real quick? She's like, lift up, lift up. Come on, just, just say hi. There she is. Want to greet your fans? Um, so yeah, Hattie, I, I washed the sheets today, so she hasn't been hanging out in bed that much because there's nothing on the bed for her to curl up in. So I put her, um, favorite blankie on the sofa next to me and that seems to have, um, enticed her to sit with me. So say hi, Hattie. Everyone wants to see you. She's like, can I please go down? <laughs> You're a silly girl. Okay, I have a, one story about Hattie is that she, when I adopted her, she was wearing this. She came like this, pink rhinestone collar. This little dog on the euthanasia list wearing a pink rhinestone collar. I was like, she's fabulous. She will keep her. Um, so yeah, Hattie came from a local shelter. What are you sniffing at? You got to go. All right. All right. Hattie has to go. Um, so. Hey, you OK? Uh, <laughs> I know. Poor little baby. Yeah. So her name was Snowflake when I adopted her and um, I renamed her like immediately. <laughs> I was like, no, no dog of mine is going to be named Snowflake. Um, so what are you sniffing? There's no treats over there. Um, so yeah, she came with that little, little collar on and I've just, I've left it on ever since. Cause I just, it's so her. Um, so she's smiling at the comments. Yeah. She's a sweet girl. She's, she has a lot of personality. There's a lot of people who say who meet her. I don't know if that's a compliment or not, but she, she has a lot of personality. Um, so guys, um, let's talk about petticoats. I was thinking we can kind of, you know, we'll have a, a topic for the day. Oh, someone asked about my earrings. Let's talk about my outfit first. This is important. So these earrings have like little tiny pearls. Um, I think I got these at Macy's. I have a ton of jewelry for photo shoots and I shop at Macy's a lot at the jewelry department. A hair flower. I got this one on Etsy from a company called Pinup Curl. I really like her flowers. I've ordered a bunch from her. If you if you just want like really pretty roses and double roses like this, she makes great ones. Um, and also the dress I'm wearing today is the night and day dress. I don't have a petticoat on because they're all getting ready to demo with, but this is a night and day dress. And this was made in a, it's like a jacquard brocade that shop that you guys have. Um, I did a lot of shopping there. So that's where I got this fabric and it's just like sleeveless night and day dress. Show you, um, I think, you know, if you have like these four styles, it will kind of like cover all your petticoat needs. Um, you'll probably need them in different colors too, to be honest. So like, um, you know, the very, at the very least having, you know, white and black, you know, white for your light colored dresses and then black for black and dark colored dresses is great. And then if you want to get like, you know, adventurous with different colored petticoats, then they, they really come in every color of the rainbow. And, but the thing is, you know, when you're wearing, when you're wearing a dress just day to day, you really don't want your petticoat showing. I mean, this is sort of like, this is a bit controversial, I will say, um, you know, when sort of in like historically you wouldn't want to show your petticoat because it's underwear so you might see it like when you were dancing and it'd be like a little ooh, you know um but it's not something that you would like have showing right but then when rockabilly came into I'm getting controversial i know oh my God. um i hope i don't say anything mm scandalous. Um so then when rockabilly's dancing and you know style came into Vogue, like I would say probably in the 80s, um, it became sort of a trend to show your petticoat at the bottom of your dress. And it's sort of a point of contention between like hardcore vintage people and like sock hop sort of style, you know, 
rockabilly folks kind of try like, you know, kind of like dabbling in it that, you know, some people think you shouldn't show your petticoat. It's, it's, it's historical, not controversial. It's, you know, I think it's just what's controversial is that some people say you should never show your petticoat. And then other people are like, well, I'll show my petticoat if I want to. And I agree. You should show it if you want to. I will say, I'm just saying this to preface everything I'm going to tell you now is that length, petticoat length is really important to me because I don't like my petticoat to show. I think it can be really fun if you like it peeks out when you're dancing or you take a, you know, like you'll sometimes see it when I'm like taking a picture or something like that. If I sit like this and you can see the petticoat, like I think that's totally fine. But for me, I don't go for the style of like if you're standing, you can see the petticoat around the hem, but some people do. So that's all of this is to preface my preferences in terms of length, okay? So it's really good to know, um, to have like sort of a standard length that you hem your skirts to. Malisha and I always do 27 inches. Um, that's sort of our preferred length. Um, yeah, exactly. So historically, yes, but not everyone is living that historically accurate life. Yeah, so guys, Again, I'm, I feel like I did not say anything controversial here. I'm not taking sides. Personally, it's not it's not because I want to be historically accurate. I just like how it looks better to not have your petticoat showing around the bottom. OK. All right. We're going to let this go now. I don't want anyone fighting in the comments. OK, so um, I generally have a length that I like my petticoat or, or my skirts. And then I want my petticoat to be a little bit shorter. OK, so for instance, all of these. How tall are you? I'm I'm five, six. OK, so I like my knees to be covered. I like my skirts to be maybe a couple inches below my knee. I don't go full T length. Um, this is why I feel like I have a hard time finding the right length petticoat because I don't that's um, not like super vintage, you know, vintage would be more T length, but it also is not super modern. So um, <laughs> that gives you a great framework. Okay, good. Um, okay, so all of this talk about length is just to tell you that when you buy a petticoat that's already made, um, and the first one I'm going to show you is from Malco Modes, they're going to give you two dimensions on the size. They're going to give you the waist and usually they give you a wide range of waist measurements. It'll be like 24 to 50 inches and you're like, great, that's helpful. And then there will be a length. Okay. So I find the length the most important number when I'm buying a petticoat. So, and I will base the size that I buy on the length measurement. So for instance, this is sort of my favorite everyday petticoat. And this is the Zoe petticoat by Malco Modes. And you can see there's not a huge amount of volume here. It's just like, it's just a little bit of fluff. Okay. And it's really nice for like work, you know, or just like day to day. Um, it has, it has, it's chiffon. Okay. It has lace around the hem, elastic waist. Now this one, this is interesting because I buy a large in this petticoat because this is the knee length version. And to get the length that I want, I have to go up to a large. And you'll probably notice that the waist measurement on a large, again, is like a wide range. So it might be anywhere from like 27 up to 48 or something like that. But the thing is, it's it, this is stretchy. It fits a wide range. And even if it's a little bit loose, there's a button and a loop on here. I can't actually show it to you right now because I'm not at the opening, but you can adjust it. There are buttonholes so that you can adjust it and make it smaller or bigger. You can also slightly adjust the length of these because you'll see there are more casings right here. So you could move the elastic down to make it shorter. OK, so you have a couple inches of wiggle room at the waist by making it shorter. OK, so all the way up to the most dramatic. So this would be the first one sort of everyday wear kind of petticoat. And um, all of 
and this one is like really old. I've been like trotting this thing around for years. Okay. It's gone to New Zealand. It's gone to Australia, London, Paris. It's been with me through many adventures. It's probably time to replace it, but it's my favorite. Okay. So that is the Zoe. Any questions about that? Uh, bah, bah, bah. I don't see anything so far. Okay. So I see you guys answering each other's questions. So that's great. You're not fighting about petticoat legs. So thank you. Um, okay. So that's the Zoe. That's my everyday petticoat. I have that in the ivory and in black. And that kind of is my everyday go to petticoat. All right. The next thing I want to show you is a fluffier chiffon petticoat. All right. This one is by Hell Bunny. This is very similar to the Malco Modes Melanie, I believe it is. And that's the one I usually buy. Um, I don't have all of my petticoats at home right now. A lot of them are at the studio. So um, you'll see that this one is also chiffon. It has more layers, okay? So a ton of layers. And instead of having lace at the bottom, it has ruffles. I know the quality on this picture isn't that great, guys, but I hope you can at least um, hear what I'm talking about. So this is chiffon. Okay, I hear you guys asking about, I see you, I see you guys asking about materials. This is chiffon, which means that it's very floofy, okay? So if you're looking, but it's soft. All right, so if you're looking for something that doesn't have a lot of like that scrunch to it, then chiffon is what you want, just like soft fluffiness. Okay, so this, like I said, is Hell Bunny. I like the Hell Bunny one because it tend like it's just the right length for my dresses. It's a really good, good length. Um, I feel like it, it hits that nice in between spot between knee length and T length that I like. So yeah, this is Hell Bunny. It comes in a lot of different colors. Um, what size did I get in this? Oh, this one says extra small to medium. So again, huge range. They also have the button on the waistband. So you can pull the waistband out, the elastic, and make it smaller. Um, they also have the casings up here. So you can make it a little shorter too. Okay, so that is is sort of a nice medium floof. This would be nice if you were doing something like going out to dinner, maybe a, a taking photos and you want like a little bit more, um, a little bit more volume, but not a ton. Um, again, nice because it's very soft. Okay, so the, uh, okay, so that's the most voluminous one. And then I'll show you the, the only one that I've made myself. Okay, so we can talk about like store-bought versus um, handmade petticoats. Okay, so that's, this is two. This is a very fluffy chiffon petticoat. All right, so let's go to the most dramatic petticoat. And this one is the style that you're going to see me wearing in um, probably most of my photo shoots. If you see my skirt looking like, I just feel like there are different levels for like daily life and then for taking pictures. Because what reads nicely in day-to-day -day life doesn't show up as well on camera. So if, if, even if you feel like it's a dramatic amount of volume, when you look at pictures of it, you might be like, oh, I wish it were a little bit more. So I would say for taking pictures or for, you know, showing off something that you've made, um, I would recommend um, going bigger, go bigger. Um, so the third style I'm going to show you, this is also Malco Modes. Um, I'm completely blanking on the name of this petticoat. Can you guys help me? Um, this is a net petticoat. Um, it has two layers. This is the net that we're talking about that's like very scratchy. It does have a layer underneath that's like organza. Okay, the Megan. Okay, all right. I can also tell you the style number 591. Okay. Oh. This one has a lot of volume. 
it will really make your skirt stand out. Someday when I can, Melanie, Melanie, thank you. It's Melanie. But didn't I say the last one was Melanie? No. I said Zoe. This one is Melanie. Okay. Thanks, guys. So, um, but now that we're naming petticoats, um, Samantha or something like that. Um, okay. So. This one, like I said, is net. It gets a little scratchy. The thing I don't like about these is that once you pull them out of storage, they're very like crunchy and ruffle, um, rumply. So if you put them under like a, a thin skirt, you'll see like bunching underneath. So you do really need to like let them hang and you can even give them a little steam, but you need to get them like looking really nice and straight underneath your skirt. So this one is going to give you a ton of volume. And I, I really recommend having like one of these. The thing I will warn you about the sizing on this. Um, this is the T length one to get the length that I want. I have to go to an extra small. So I just this just goes to show you how weird petticoat sizing can be, because I'm wearing a large in the Zoe and an extra small in the Melanie. OK, I also this one also doesn't have the adjustable waistband. So kind of what you see is what you get here. There's a little bit less um, wiggle room here, but um, I'm not an extra small in any garment <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination other than this one. So you there is some wiggle room here. OK, um, so that is the third level of floof. OK. And then I did also want to show you one that I've made. And then this is a pattern you can buy um, from Butterick. I think it's 6530. So, and you can see this has been in storage for a little while. This one I would say is similar in volume to the Hell Bunny one. It has a layer of soft net with lace on the bottom. All love the lace. And then there's a layer underneath that's lining fabric. So I did lining fabric at the top and then elastic in there. So the nice thing, you can see this one has quite a bit of volume too. The really nice thing about making your own crinoline, and I know you've probably heard me say several times now how much I don't like making petticoats or crinolines, is, the nice thing about it is that you can get the exact length you want and you can exact, get the exact fit you want in the waist without having to do all of that experimentation that I was talking about with like the size large and the size extra small and all of that. So that's the really nice thing about making your own. I will say just, you know, be really patient with it because um, it takes a while and you have to like gather all this net by hand. Um, I'm a big fan of my ruffler foot, but rufflers, at least I've never had any success using a ruffler foot on any, they even ordered a gathering foot, which is something totally different. And it didn't work on that either. So this has to be done by hand. Okay. All right. So that's, um, I hope that answers your questions about making petticoats and um, different types of petticoats that might be handy to have in your wardrobe. Um, but I would say probably the most Im important thing, like I said at the beginning, is figuring out your preferences in terms of length, figuring out if you have a, um, a preference in terms of your skirt length, and then most likely getting your petticoat to be a couple, one or two, you know, maybe one or two inches shorter than your skirt, not too much. What can happen is if your skirt is too much or your petticoat is too much shorter than your skirt, you're going to see a ridge around where the bottom of the petticoat is. So you don't want that. So I will say it's a, it's like a, a lot of um, trial and error. And um, that's why I have like a dozen petticoats <laughs> um, just from trying different things with it. So, um, all right. Do you guys have any questions? Um, use a ruffler. Yeah, see, I was just saying I haven't been able to make a ruffler attachment work in tool. So if you guys know how to do that. Um, that would be great. Hell Bunny, I don't think there's a name. Uh, someone just asked, what's the name of the one from Hell Bunny? I don't think it has a, a name because they only have one style. So just look up Hell Bunny Petticoat. All right. Good. Um, 
So great. That was fun. Um, how's everyone doing? Any more questions? Um, is there a difference between the terms crinoline and petticoat? Um, I kind of use them interchangeably, but I think, you know, historically the difference was that crinoline use, uses crinoline fabric. It's a type of fabric to, to make it. So um, I'm sure it seems like we have some historians in the comments, so maybe someone can answer answer more definitively. And a petticoat would, would be more like the chiffon um, fluffy style. Okay. All right, everyone. So um, just to give you a few little updates. Um, so we're going to do totally for free just to kind of help get you through this crazy time. I hope you're enjoying it. We're going to do part three today. It's 45 minutes long, so it's a little bit longer. Um, Sabrina, if you're late, you can always rewatch this later. I'll keep it up on my YouTube channel. Um, so the other thing, what was I saying? Okay, so part three is constructing the bodice. So you're going to see me doing the underlining, stay stitching, and then getting it in, in the class. So I do hope you will join me for that. Um, and what else? Oh, the other thing I was going to do that, I just don't want to get too off topic today. Um, okay. So, yes, yeah, so I'm wearing the night and day dress. Um, okay. So, we're going to go to YouTube in a little bit. Okay, so I had some technical difficulties. Um, one thing that I didn't do today was I didn't schedule the live. So, maybe that's what caused my problems. Um, do you guys prefer if it's scheduled and then you can kind of like hang out here in advance? I wasn't sure if it mattered. Um, as you're noticing, I'm, I'm kind of new to the whole YouTube live thing. So let me know if, um, if you prefer that. I can definitely start setting these up ahead of time so you guys can come in. Yes, you prefer that. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So the other thing I want to call issues as well. Um, but now we know how you talk <laughs> and you can plan around it. So, okay. All right. So the other thing I wanted to say is that tomorrow um, I already scheduled a live on Patreon. OK, so I do two long form live streams every month on my on Patreon. OK, great. So um, if you're not on Patreon, you just need to be at the three dollar level to join that live. Um, so that's three dollars a month and it, you get a lot, so including these live feeds. Um, one, <coughs> we had planned to have Malisha, and I was going to, it was gonna be me and Malisha for the live on Patreon tomorrow. But she obviously is working from home like I am, and we are both um, isolating. So there will be no Malisha tomorrow, sadly. But Malisha, are, are you still there, Malisha? Are, are you gonna be able to make the live for Patreon tomorrow? Um, because there were a lot of questions that people sent in, um, a, for Malisha and like about me and Malisha and how we met and stuff like that. And so I thought it'd be fun. I could answer a couple of them. If Malisha is in the comments, that might be fun. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So schedule, please. All right. So, um, that is all to say that Saturday I will be back here on YouTube, all right? So I can do a different time. You know, we can try, um, yay from Alicia. Um, okay, so, yeah, someone just joined Patreon yesterday. The Patreon is great, it's really fun. There's a great community there. I've been doing giveaways too. I just announced um, three winners of a fabric giveaway that I did today. Um, so, and that was for some of my spotlight fabrics. So that was really exciting because you can't get those in the US um, or really anywhere outside of Australia or New Zealand. So I gave away three five yard bundles. Um, so that was really fun. And next month, hopefully if all goes as and it's something really exciting. Okay, I'll sign up now. Oh, thank you. The other's Christine McConnell. <laughs> There seems to be a lot of crossover. 
between my followers and Christine McConnell. So that is really nice to hear. Like I said yesterday, I really love her. So yeah, you can follow me. You can follow Christine McConnell on Patreon. Um, so yeah, she was one of the first people I, I signed up for the, her Patreon too. So um, yeah. All right. Thanks everyone. So um, tomorrow, 6 p.m. on Patreon, I'm going to schedule another premiere tomorrow for the live. No, I'm sorry. Another premiere tomorrow for the Lamore dress class. Okay. And um, then we'll just keep going with all of this. So I have really loved doing all of this, doing all the lives and connecting with you all every day. Thank you for getting me out of my PJs and talking to people and um, just join Patreon today. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So yeah, thank you guys again. And I just want to say, I know times are crazy right now. I hope you're hanging in there. Um, and I'm thinking of all of you and just send you all good vibes. And I hope that, you know, not too long from now, this is all a distant memory. So it's been really fun and we'll just keep doing it. All right. So I will see you in 15 minutes now at the um, YouTube premiere for part three of the Lamore dress class. All right. Love you all. Mwah. We'll see you in a little bit.